video, I'll show you how I create this illustration in Artflow. Let's go. Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited to have you here with me today. We're diving back into Artflow to create a new illustration. It's been a while since I last used Artflow because I've been exploring other art apps like Infinite Painter and Clip Studio Paint. For the longest time, Artflow was the go-to drawing app on Android. While there are now many excellent alternatives, Artflow remains a popular choice among a lot of Android digital artists. So I thought it would be a good, great idea to revisit it and brush up on my skills. Today's video is going to focus on the inking stage of the illustration. I've already prepared a sketch ahead of this time-lapse recording to keep things moving along smoothly. I decided to draw 2B from Noir uh, Automata. She has an amazing costume design that's perfect for an inking piece because it features a lot of blacks and intricate details. This should be a fun and challenging subject to work on. The thing is, as soon as I started word drawing in Artflow again, the first thing I noticed was how much I struggled with the default brushes. Back when Artflow was my main drawing app, I can get some pretty solid results with the default brushes. But let's be honest, Artflow has always had a few quirks. For instance, I've never used the pencil brushes in the pencil presets because they didn't give me the versatility I needed. They weren't soft enough or did it have enough of that details? Um, it just, it didn't have enough of both. Instead, I would use the marker or square shape pens in the pen preset to get the brush flow I wanted. And for inking? Well, I would switch over to the painting brushes and use the round or flat brushes to achieve that naturalistic look. However, this time around, none of those brushes seemed to give me the results I was looking for. It occurred to me that this might be because I'd been using Clip Studio Paint and got used to the custom brushes I had set up there. To test this theory, I decided to recreate those brushes in our flow using the custom brush editor. And guess what? The custom brushes felt way better. I guess you could say it become a bit of a brush snob. I went ahead and created a couple of br pencil brushes, a few ink brushes, and a splatter brush. That was enough to arm me for this illustration. Now, I would love to share these brushes with you guys, but unfortunately, Artflow doesn't allow you to export or import brushes. This is a real shame because it would be such a useful feature. Honestly, I think it's a complete missed opportunity from the Artflow team. If you're interested in a deeper dive of how I created those brushes in Artflow, just let me know in the comments. Once I had my custom brushes set up, the whole inking process went a lot smoother. I became much more comfortable with my lines, and one technique I absolutely love to use is using the same brush for both my inking and eraser tool. This allows me to use the eraser tool to apply negative inking to my blacks and carve out textures and shapes within the deep blacks of the illustration. It's a fantastic way to add depth and detail to your work. Speaking of the brush editor and art flow, Let's take a moment to appreciate its capabilities. I know I might seem a little negative on this video, but there are some bright spots with Artflow. The brush editor is a powerful tool that allows you to fine tune both the existing and custom brushes. Without it, I wouldn't be able to achieve the results that you see here. You can adjust the brush shape, size, opacity flow, and many other settings. This level of customization can really help you achieve the look that you're going for even if the default brushes don't quite hit the mark. It's all about experimenting and finding what best works for you. Now, despite Artflow lacking some features that its competitors have, I've still managed to create professional looking artwork with it in the past. At the end of the day, a drawing app is just a tool. It's up to you as an artist to use that tool to achieve your desired look. Each illustration is an exercise in problem solving and critical thinking. And I fail a lot during this process, as you can see in this video here, but it's important to keep at it and try new things. Encourage yourself to overcome those challenges and strive to improve, even when it's tedious, hard, and makes you want to give up. Remember, all of your art heroes have been where you are, and like them, you can overcome your hurdles. 
Creating art is a journey, and every piece you work on is a step forward. Don't get discouraged by setbacks or mistakes. Instead, view them as opportunities to learn and grow. I know, it's a lot easier said than done. One thing I've learned over the years is that perseverance is key. As we all know, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. It's all about putting in the time and effort to hone your skills. You'll see in this time lapse how I tackle different parts of the illustration. From refining the sketch to adding details and textures, every step is crucial. One thing I like to do is to break down the illustration into manageable, manageable sections. This helps me focus on one area at a time and ensures that I don't get overwhelmed by the complexity of the entire piece. While working on this illustration, I also paid attention to the overall composition. Now, this is more relevant to the sketch stage, but I think it's worth mentioning that good compensation that good composition is essential for creating a visually appealing piece. It helps guide the viewer's eye and enhances the overall impact of your artwork. At the sketch stage, don't be afraid to experiment with different compositions until you find the one that works best for your piece. As I continue inking, I pay close attention to the line. Clean, confident lines can make a huge difference in the final outcome of your illustration. It's important to practice your line work and develop a steady hand. Don't rush the step. Take your time to ensure that your lines are smooth and precise. One of the challenges I faced during this illustration was achieving the right balance between light and shadow. I mean, 2B's costume has a lot of black hair, and it's crucial to get the shadows just right to create a sense of depth and realism. I used negative inking technique to carve out highlights and add textures to the dark areas. This technique not only adds depth, but can also make the illustration more dynamic and visually interesting. As we near the end of the inking process, I want to take a moment to reflect on the journey we've been on with this illustration. From the initial sketch to the final touches, every step has been an opportunity to learn and improve. And you can see it with me erasing or redoing elements or rethinking how I'm approaching things. It's important to stay motivated and keep pushing yourself to try new things. Whether if it's experimenting with different brushes, techniques, or styles, there's always something new to discover. And that's what makes drawing fresh and exciting to do every single time. I hope this video has given you some valuable insights in the process of creating an illustration in art flow. Remember, the key to becoming a better artist is practice and perseverance. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and try to learn from them. Every piece you create is a stepping stone towards your artistic goals. And with that said, here's how the final inks turned out. What did you guys think? Did it turn out okay despite some of the challenges that we faced? Before wrapping up, I want to thank you all for your support and encouragement. Your comments and feedback mean a lot to me, and I love hearing from you. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and hit subscribe to the channel for more digital art content. Until next time, keep drawing.